All right, and I'm just going to do a quick audio test. And now I'm going to do a quick audio test with the Pathfinder music going. And we're live. All right. So I guess I should start off the easiest way and give all you Latin lassies a little bit of a heads up that I have actually played through this game before uh, as a tabletop, made it about halfway through as a PM. I have only played the intro of this game uh, twice now. First time I tried just a quick overplay, then I tried stream on Twitch, and I just decided why not just do it for YouTube, since that's where we're heading for uh, quality anyway. I do think I am going to shrink my camera box down a little bit, though. I know my camera's not exactly the best for what I'm doing, and front lighting would be nice, but that would be too kind of myself. <clears throat> All right. I like the new setup, that's a good layout, shouldn't be blocking off anything on the screen. Dog in the periph, you might just want to tilt my screen a little bit so his cuteness is showing. And my roommate's staring intently at the screen even though there's like a 20 some odd second delay thanks to YouTube so he won't see the doggo on screen for until... Then. <laughs> this is Snoop the dog. You took a boy. Yes, you are. We're going to start off the stream with the cute pepper. Yes. We'll give me kisses. Mwah. Okay. Snoop, you're not regal over there. Nobody can see you. Yeah. No, you can't crawl on me. No. No. Lay down. Or not. Whatever. Bye, Snoop. All right. Let's actually get to the stream, why don't we? I'm willing to bet my roommate actually kind of wants to see me play this. Since I've talked about this campaign so many times. So, I'm going to go quickly into my saves. And delete them, because I didn't like how either of them started. New 
game. Main story. Level up off, death store on. I'm gonna be lazy and make it so I can't permadeath just for fun. Let's play. Remove negative effects on rest. I can homebrew the ever-living daylights out of this. Yeah! Kingdom management. Normal. It was all the interface hints and combat. No. We'll show tutorials. Seems like some good settings. Yeah, we're gonna create a new character. Because I don't want to play any of the ones I got. Alright. I like this portrait regardless of what the race and class are, so I'm going to go there. I'm going to skip the fact that that's an Asimar because I want a boost to my charisma. You know what? I think I might just go lazy and uh, go with human right off the bat. Get that extra feat as a spellcaster. What do I want to do? Hmm. You know what? I'm going to go to class first. Figure out what class I want. We got Alchemist, Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter. Inquisitor, Kineticist, Eldritch Archer, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Slayer. I kind of want to go Arcane Archer. Going straight Sorcerer would be fun. You know what? Let's do it.
I'm just going to disappear for two seconds on screen, and in the meantime, uh, this will have all of the things showing. I just uh, want to show the whole screen, and at the same time, it is going to mute my microphone because I have this all hotkeyed.
video back on. Let's see here. Looking through our four horn options. What do you think, Alex? I'm gonna go through all of them. Out of the four options. I chose you two. My usual go to for my Hero Forge uh, characters. Ooh, I can change the horn colors! Ah, oh, yeah! Oh no, there's only four hair color hair options. Oh, the super boring stuff of all setting up a new character. All the fun stuff that people love watching at the beginning of a stream. Yes, red hair. Red hair with blue skin and blue horns. We'll show up in a second. Kind of click through them all. I like this light purple. Good color combo. Go live for the build. Class, we're gonna go. Oh, you know, we're just gonna go Sorcerer 20. Let's be honest. Just because I'm not the biggest fan of Wizard. Uh, East Brood Roxasha Spawn. East Broods regard themselves as deserving of appreciation and opulence. Their deceit, through deceit and sheer willpower, they often achieve privileged stations in society. Plus two dex, plus two charisma, minus two whiz. Plus two to perception and persuasion when used for bluff. Uh, Sura spawn. Dex whiz minus int. Con whiz minus int. Dex int minus whiz. Con whiz. Strength wisdom. Strength wisdom. Strength charisma. Con Charisma, X Charisma, just regular key blank. Spite spawn. Because plus two dex, plus two charisma, minus two int, plus two to persuasion when used for diplomacy. And knowledge world checks. You can use the sound burst spell once a day and a plus one DC to all saving throws against enchantment spells. When I enchantment spell. Yeah, let's be honest, I'm gonna go with Chitin. I was gonna do Spite Spawn. <coughs> but the Shackleboard and Chitin Spawn get a plus two to Con, a plus two to Charisma, a minus two to Wisdom, plus two to Mobility and Persuasion when used for Intimidate, 
the web spell and a plus one natural armor bonus to AC. And we're gonna go with that because sorcerers can't wear armor! Dex is one of my most important stats. Whatever caused awkward noises for anybody listening. As I adjust my audio volume on my headset. <laughs> Alex, take a look at the uh, chat. <laughs> uh. Alright, so I'm gonna go with Spite Spawn, cause like, that clearly is the best build. Plus one DC to saving throws is not as great as a plus one natural AC bonus to armor. Because I believe that actually goes towards your flat foot as well. And what are we going to do for our bloodline? Probably arcane, because I'm lazy. Combat casting, improved initiative, iron will, reach. Spell, skill focus, arcana. Spell focus, greater spell focus, spell penetration. Compound expertise. No, I want combat casting. Combat casting isn't something I can get automatically. It's not worth the price. I say as I'm taking human, where I can probably take combat casting as my first feat. But the arcane bloodline makes the most sense. Right, our race, we're going to get a plus two. How do I get to choose which one? Oh wait, I did keep playing. Never mind, I'm silly. Thinking that I was doing human. Alright, so I'm gonna get... Ugh. Well, I already know... Gonna dump 10 points straight into getting an 18 in Charisma. <clears throat> I'm gonna do... Alright, um... Oh, plus one strength. I want a plus three.
not sure if I like this point set up. Controller and my lab scene. I'm going to shut off my webcam for a moment. I'm gonna shut off my latest follow. Recent subscriber, so that the full screen should be showing. Really hoping that this count will go up to three at some point and I will get my first new subscriber, but. Actually, speaking of, Alex, are you subscribed? You should go on your phone and subscribe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, I'm not sure how I feel about this point spread to start the game off. I mean, I got a plus three, a plus four, two plus ones, and everything else is zeros, so I'm not taking any minuses in anything. But, like, do I really need to be able to see things? Because I could take those two points in wisdom, drop that to a minus one, because eh, perception is for other people up my con I'm gonna bring intelligence up to an odd number because when I level up I can add that to that let's see here mm. uh, Alex the only thing that you can't see highlighted is athletics on the list of skills and I've got three three skill points that I can post, so uh, kind of like how in 5e you automatically get your modifier, and instead of getting a proficiency bonus, you get to add skill points into the thing, so you get ranks. Um, what skills should I put my, uh, my points into? Yeah, so any of the ones that have a check mark are class skills. I'll give it a moment, it'll uh, load up the thing about class skills in a moment onto the big TV. Wait, where's use magic to put? Ah! Give it a second, it'll pull up the thing for it. And yes, people, I am letting Alex help me pick my character, even though I know Pathfinder way better than he does!
mic on because noises are noises and YouTube can't figure things out if they can't see it. Alright, so I have a point in athletics for a plus one, a point in persuasion for a plus eight, and knowledge arcana. Yeah, I want knowledge arcana because it's going to help me uh, identify um, things. Alright. Two abilities. I get a feat, a sorcerer bonus feat, arcane bond, and a bloodline class skill selection. So I'm gonna start with choose a school of magic and a spell is that equal to school plus one. Blank shot. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna be smart. I'm gonna use, take combat casting off the bat because I'm not a dummy. So I got a wider selection with my full list of free feeds, so I should probably wait on that. And just pick like that for the moment, so I can come in here and pick. Combat casting for my class feet, then come into my other feats here and see what I've got. He says weapon finesse is not a great idea, but I disagree. I think weapon finesse is a great one, because I can use my dexterity instead of strength for my attack rolls. And I am not a strength-based build. Initiative, great fortitude, endurance. Uh, crap, what's the feat that gives you extra health off the bat? Arcane Strike. Do I take weapon finesse or do I take the extra hit dice because I'm a sorcerer and I might much squish? So three hit points right off the bat and then starting at third level I get an additional plus one HP per level. It's a really good Honestly, if I was playing human, I would have taken uh, combat casting, um, combat passing, toughness, and weapon finesse. But I will go with toughness and combat casting. Because it helps.
helps prevent me from bad things happening. Arcane Bond. First level, you can form a powerful bond with an object or creature. The bond takes one of two forms, familiar bonded object. It's an object you can use to cast additional spells. Ooh. Hey Alex, would you go on and subscribe? Weird. My subscriber count did not go up by one. I'm in a toss-up right now. The chicken familiar gives you plus three hit points and plus two perception. The lizard familiar gives you a plus one to natural armor bonus and a plus two on perception checks. And an arcane bond object, I can restore a spell that I had prepared, a wizard had prepared, but I kind of like the idea not gonna lie, that extra 3 HP from the chicken sounds pretty good. But so does the extra 1 AC. I'm gonna go with the lizard. Oh, and then I get a Mudline class skill. What do you think, Alex? Knowledge world, knowledge lore. Religion. Nature, religion, or world? Let's be honest, world knowledge is always the best. Get to choose two spells. Shield. And
Oh, it's so hard when you can only pick two spells. And always take shield because it's a reaction. No oh, standard action. But it's, t yeah, but it's one minute per level, which would be, uh, ten rounds. So, I'm taking shield regardless. It's literally, like, the best spell to take at first level. But, damage spells. Fifteen foot cone. I'm going to do Snowball. Because Snowball does 1d6 damage, plus they may end up getting staggered for one round. <laughs> Snowball and shield. Adventures are exciting. Hey, have a look. Oh, I kind of feel like I should change my fuck my portrait. That's mean. <laughs> Alright, let's see here. Yeah, 15 AC. Our story started at the mansion of an Aldori sword lord. 
drawn by the promise of a most dangerous task and a commensurately huge reward. Heroes of all stripes gathered here. Where are they? This is taking forever. I didn't even say what this was for, just that the Eldori were looking for heroes. Who are the Eldori anyway, rich folk? If you can't be patient, no one's keeping you here. Just go back to your mountains or whatever. The Eldori Sword Lord. All right, you purple toad, just shut your trap. And if you can't, I'll help you. Hush! Quiet! They're coming. Greetings, everyone. I am Sword Lord Jamandi Aldori, and this is Lord Mayor Yosef Salimius of Restal. Welcome to my mansion. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts for responding to our call. You may be few, but that's unavoidable. We need only the best of the best for this task. And I see true heroes before me, strong and fearless, exactly what Restal needs. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Now, to the point. South of here, just beyond Brevoy's border, lies a region known as the Stolen Lands. This is disputed territory, and while it's long been claimed by nearby states, it's never been truly taken. I won't bore you with the legal technicalities. Suffice to say that anyone with enough courage and power to seize the Stolen Lands and name themselves Baron or Baroness, claiming dominion, well, none of the neighboring states would be able to challenge it. Of course, Restal would be first to recognize the legitimacy of this new state, as well as the noble title of its founder. Unfortunately, one serious obstacle stands between you and this title. A gang of bandits hold sway in the Stolen Lands. Their chief, who they call the Stag Lord, considers himself the rightful owner of these lands, and no one has yet been able to challenge his power. Bring me his head, and you'll be able to return to the Stolen Lands as their legal ruler. Any questions? I will, of course. I'm the leader of this team, after all. Don't worry, though. I'll make it worth your while to help me. We haven't yet begun, and you already speak of divvying rewards. What makes you think we'll even succeed? There's little point arguing over who gains the title when we'll most likely lose our lives there. <clears throat> if I may please answer the question. We believe you're all equally deserving of a noble title. Over the course of your expedition, it will be up to you as a team to decide which of you is best suited to rule. Don't ask stupid questions. Why should you even care? What they have to gain and why, that's for Lady Aldori and I to discuss. It's none of your concern. Your only concern is to swing your sword around or whatever it is you do. Of course we stand to benefit from this enterprise. But if you're concerned that we intend to rule your country from afar, using you as a front, but please know that these concerns are unfounded. Let's just say that we have a strong interest in the region's stability. We have need of a ruling power we can negotiate with, not bandit gangs and monster hordes. What is that smell in the air? Is it the smell of unspoken words and political intrigue? And what reward would you seek beyond a noble title 
and you will... We'll absorb the costs of preparing and equipping your expeditions. Once you return victorious, Restoff will also allocate you a significant sum to provide financial support for you to establish your country. Essentially, we'll help you build your capital. I hope such a reward is satisfactory. Words, words, words. Significant, financial. I can't fill my belly with pretty words. Of course. There will also be an official banquet held in your honor. All of Rostov's high society will gather to celebrate your feat. Now you're talking. <coughs> That's a good point. As I see it, this stag lord already holds power over the region with confidence. Many noble bloodlines were started by bandits who just got lucky, weren't they? Perhaps because we do have standards to maintain. This room has seen many celebrations of adventurers, and even those who just got lucky. But giving a noble title to a bandit lord? <laughs> That's one thing that's never happened here, and it won't while I still breathe. Excellent. You venture forth tomorrow. For now, you can take some time to get to know one another better. Or you can head straight to your guest rooms to get some rest. You'll find we've already prepared supplies for you there. And thank you again for agreeing to take part in this expedition. I wish you luck. Thank you again, with all my heart, for replying to this call. The flare in your eyes reveals your courage. The unshakable will that distinguishes true heroes. I look at you, O oh champions of Restoff, and doubt not for a second that you'll be victorious. So venture forth toward your feet. Go and return in triumph. real adventure. So, shall we go teach this stag lord a lesson? <laughs> I have no doubt. Kind of related, I wanted to ask you something. How do you feel about this Tartuccio fellow? I think he's pretty obnoxious personally. He appointed himself head of the team, and he's just after the Baron's crown, or whatever it is Baron's wear. It doesn't matter. I don't like him. I think you should be team leader. When I first saw you, I couldn't help but think, now here's a real hero. Someone who'll be praised in poems and songs. This, this is the person I'll write my book about. Damn, I should have led with that. Please, just let me explain. You know what the trouble with most heroes' biographies is? They're always written years later, based on the tales of, best case, people who saw things from the outside. Worst case, someone heard about it from their brother, who heard it from their friend, who heard it from their cousin, and so on, adding a new batch of lies each time. Every time I read about a heroic journey, I think to myself, why didn't they just bring a bard with them to write it all down properly? And then I thought, I could be that bard. I just needed to find a suitable hero and volunteer to follow along on their glorious adventure. A great plan, huh? And here we are, with a heroic... Oh yeah, she's fantastic. You can tell she could tear a bear's head off with her bare hands, but she kind of scares me just a little. But, I mean, her sword's twice as big as I am. She could cut me down without even noticing. Just think on it a bit, all right? I'm sure you'll agree. All right, I'm going to my room to write about tonight. See you in the morning.
and I am back. No, I already know that there's nothing else I benefit from. I'm doing anything other than Mansion's under attack. We need to help. Some villains broke in and started killing everyone. I barely made it. Hurry, we have to help the guards fight off the attackers or we'll all be cut down one by one. I don't hey. tolerate threats. Now we get to see what I have for weapons. Light crossbow and a dagger. Stand down. You offend me. Head out to combat and go save Adventures this guy. He's a bit of a jerk. And you'll see why. Come at me, I dare you. Alex, you turn the overheads on. Waiting to see what the light balance is gonna look like. Cause I'm very awkwardly flushed at the moment. That's why I'm waiting to see what the lights are gonna look like with the new... Yeah, I look way more like a human than that. So bright. But it's so bright. Could totally shortcut and just like. my stream but there we go I can deal with. I went on to the screen to check. Oh, Banshee, are you gonna be super loud and be annoying on my stream? 
You gonna play with your noisy bone? Away, you rascal! You're just in time. A bit longer and I'd have been... Whew, I don't even want to think about it. Can you imagine what a terrible loss this would have been? But it's all right now. I'm safe, sound and unscathed. Ready to lead you to victory. Lady Jamandi is holding the line in the banquet hall. You know, the one where she had us gathered before. We need to make our way to her. And along the way, we'll try to save some of these dummies who are supposed to accompany us to the stolen land. Speaking of dummies, take this ring. Quiet now, so that little fool doesn't hear us. She might try to steal it herself. It's magical. It'll protect you. You'll need it while you work to defend me. And this is where my knowledge comes in. About playing the intro already. Giving my roommate a minute to read what happened. And dialogue. So this little purple guy is a jerk and that is a setup for him to uh, try and screw me over later. So I am not going to equip that magical ring even though it's quite beneficial. Friendship lasts forever. Um, this is gonna audio loop because I forgot to mute my microphone before I did that. I'll share my path. Is there trouble? They won't see a thing. How cute! No time for idling. Stand down. They choose to stand against me. Serves you right. Leave this one to me! You deserved it! Oh. Any last wishes? You offend me! <laughs> The world is full of 
wonder. This is my time to shine. I'll share my path. Conversation. I'm gonna pull my mics up, and yeah, um, this little my purple jerk Cartuccio here. I'm gonna give you guys one solid guess on why I don't like him. And I'm giving it a second to delay for my TV in my house. So I can now turn to Alex and say, why do you think I don't like this guy? Looks it, he is chaotic evil. Yeah. Oh, there's a story thing for these guys too? Cartuccio is a powerful sorcerer who can burn an enemy to a crisp with a flick of his fingers. Unfortunately, his power is matched only by his arrogance. I wonder why power is always given to such self-satisfied people. Very chaotic party right now. Me with chaotic neutral, chaotic good for the bard. Your time is over. Time to get my hands dirty again. Oh, it's you. Stay up from under my feet or I'll strike you down. Bear 
barbarians. I think that's exactly how heroes should be. What, stupid, sweaty, and always looking for something to gobble up or lop the head off of? Calistria, save me from such heroes. The dangers don't frighten me. And this is why we let the DM get through cutscenes, because you're level one and that's a frost giant. Alright, let's see here. Do, 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 do. And this is why I need to remember to hit the mute button after I switch my microphone back on. challenge at all out of my way come at me i dare you oh nice Leave now i know how to make the entire party uh attack oh, of opportunity wait, at the same time i just select the entire party at once Also, Alex, did you see my lizard companions scootering around? Wait until after the fight versus on the screen, you'll see them. Okay. He's scootering around. Oh, you, you forget. useful items in there, but if I go in there and I take the stuff, then uh, I have to go in here to get the key. If I don't loot the armory, it's one less thing that the douchebag will try to turn on me. I'll share my path. Which sucks, because I really want to take that stuff. But oh, familiar faces. I hope you're not so frightened as to swing at every shadow. It's me, Jathal. I don't recommend advancing down the hallway, assuming you value your life, of course. There were a few people with me, and you can see what happened to them. And just how did they all end up dead while you don't seem to have a scratch? I'll answer but briefly and just once. Further scares and explanations will wait until we aren't being hunted by a group of assassins. Deal? All right. I'm undead. These traps are deadly to the living, but they're harmless to me. What do you mean, undead? Really? Like, zombies or skeletons or...? As I said, further explanations will wait until later. All you need to know right now is that we're on the same side, and we have to fight off a small army of hired assassins. Let's get to it. How cute! How 
all curious. And Lindsay was called forth. Applause, please. And so they walked on. Applause, please. Anything else? Let's get into this fight, even though they think they're getting us first. Oh, I love this. It literally triggers as though they notice me. But because I was in stealth, I actually get the attack of opportunity here. Just give it a second to get through the uh, conversation and notice how we're, all my characters are still blue. I have not tried this before, so let's see. Unworthy. Everybody! O only one person did. Whatever. This is where I shoot him. <laughs> Dead. Shoot him. Just die already. <laughs> yes. Shoot him. Stand em. down. Yeah. My RNG is great this run. Ooh, secret cash. I say, like, I don't already know what it is. And I will send... Two of you in here. I will send two of you in here. Obviously loot everything. A simple smile goes Just a long letting way. the ink dry. And now for the fun part. Uh oh, I'm just gonna mute my mic because this is gonna be just stress for me. And I don't want you seeing my face and hearing my awkward, angry noises while I randomly make a puzzle work.
The dangers don't frighten me. Speak. Adventures are exciting. Anything is possible. I will grant your request. You cannot stand against me. Wretched thing. <laughs> you offend me.
All right, so at this point, it seems weird that I decided not to give her the composite longbow, which does almost as much damage as her masterwork scythe does as a ranged weapon, but I am not giving it to her because I'm probably not going to get her at the end due to story decisions I'm going to make later on where I get to choose my party. And I'm going to make sure I keep my little bard because she's so cute. Not in love with the hairstyle. Looks cuter on the character portrait than it does on the uh, avatar, so to say. I'm going to see if there's anything nicer for you. We do not character abilities simple weapons all right let's see here that means dagger light mace punching dagger sickle club heavy mace sword spear dart heavy crossbow javelin light crossbow sling great club long spear quarter staff and spear Heavy mace for your offhand option. I'll give you a short bow for range, because I don't really want to give you the nice stuff. Yeah, it makes way more sense to give them the better weapons for the upcoming fights, but like, I want to make sure I have those items. Uh, the next step. And we're gonna have a fight here. Lindsay goes first. Serves you Shoot right. him. Move over here. And inspire courage. Oh no. What type of attack? Oh. I have no option to do that. Magic missile because I do it. Burning the spell slot on that guy. Ooh. Five damage, nice. Oh no, Lindsay, no! Don't attack Lindsay! No! Don't attack my bard! So I'm just going to. Your time is over. Oh no, I missed. <coughs> Advance. Yeah, let's start riggedy riggedy wrecking these dudes. with that weapon that I just gave you. Oh, no. Miss. Oh. I'm rolling horribly today.
unworthy. Any last wishes? This is where I step in. Leave this one to me. Everything is so much fun with a little fire. What a night, huh? I thought I was all alone. It's good you're here. A bit boring, chasing fool assassins without anyone watching the show. It's not fun at all. Many people have died for nothing. Of course. I'm from Kadira. But tales of hot deserts and shady oases can wait until the fighting's finished. But if you'd like to share a dinner and pleasant conversation, just say the word. I like making new friends. I am Kayesu, one of the many here who seek a better fate, answering the call of Lady Jamandi. But unlike the others, I never dropped my guard day or night. It's why I'm still alive. I don't know where you're headed, but I'll be at the entrance to the main hall. I think I saw some guards there. Join me there, if you wish. Uh huh. Grotus, I can sense your silhouette hovering over me. It won't be much longer. Soon we shall meet. Oh, Lord of Oblivion. I'm dying. I knew this expedition was doomed. Oh, Grotus, my vision darkens. Ugh. Too late. Forgive me. Oblivion is calling. That's impossible. <coughs> oh, it, uh... It seems you might be right. Yeah. It, uh, it seems I will live. I suppose I must postpone meeting my god. Not for long, I'm sure. But while we remain in this transient world, Arim is at your service. trend of uh, a chat and talk about stuff that's going on with my two watchers which were 100% not me and me nope it's definitely not me on my paid for YouTube premium and my roommates YouTube logged into the TV so that we can have two streamers so we get twice the watch time Cheating my way towards that thousand hours of watch time. Two viewers at a time. Just means I need to stream for 500 hours. Alright, let's see here. Group formation. There we go. Uh, we're gonna do a triangle formation. We're gonna put the cleric and the others up in the front here. I'm gonna go into my character list. I'm gonna go to the Lindsay's belt. I'm gonna have her drink a potion. I'm gonna drink another potion. I'm gonna go into my inventory. Sort. I've got 12 more cure light wound potions. I'm gonna make sure that everybody ha everybody except for the Inquisitor has them. 
as for those of you who are not quite aware of the interestingness of uh, characters here, our Inquisitor here, who... is an undead elf. Let's see here. Jethal is an elf from Kionin, one who is not quite alive. The elves exiled her from their kingdom for her horrible deeds. Her search for a new home and new patron has bought, brought her to our leader's banner. She pays little heed to her companions, and when she does, she behaves as if she is ready to bite off their heads. She gives me the creeps. Let's hope our enemies are just as frightened. But yeah, due to her being undead, let's go over to our potions and see what happens when we check the info. When laying your hands upon a living creature, you channel positive energy that cures 1d8 points of damage plus 1 point per caster level, maximum plus 5. Since undead are powered by negative energy, this spell deals damage to them instead of curing their wounds. An undead creature will apply the spell resistant will apply spell resistance and can attempt a will save to take half damage. Meaning that if you are dealing with a undead like this, Jump into their spell book real quick and we'll take a look at Inflict Light Wounds compared to Cure Light Wounds. Since Undead are powered by negative energy, this spell cures such a creature of a like amount of damage rather than harming it. And the funny thing when it came down to how Pathfinder and 3-5 were run, inflict minor wounds did more damage than cure light wounds did. So if you were playing undead, you actually had twice the healing power. Which I think is an absolutely hilarious situation. I'm also really hoping that my wizard does not have the ability to get killed, because I don't want to wait a year in-game to get a new familiar. That will be really, really sucky. And it's going to be another uh, conversation bit, so I'm going to mute the mic so I can uh, listen to it at home. You, run and get an axe. You, bring more water. You, stay here and hold our defense. Those assassins are still around here somewhere. Aha! Some of our guests survived. Good. You need to get to the banquet hall and help Lady Jamandi. Tested House Garess, a fighter in the service of Sword Lord Jamandi Algori. Right now, I'm in charge of the mansion guards. As you can see, there's a lot to do. This guy is important for later. If I were a rich and influential lady like Jamandi, I'd also get myself a manly captain of the guard. Or Someone opened the gate. Let in a group of assassins in the middle of the night. Now they've set the mansion on fire to cut off access to the hall. They don't want Lady Jamande to get reinforcements. We cleared the passage so you can get through. Just try to avoid inhaling the smoke. We'll be right behind you. We just need to put out the fire first to save the mansion. Considering Lady Jamande's fame, I'm not surprised that the whole pack of assassins were unleashed on her, including a giant. But what's at stake? What could anyone hope to gain? No, we'll manage. I've got my best people here, those who still live. Your place is by Lady Algori's side. It doesn't seem right. What if some of the guards are wounded? We need to help them. You'll have to run through the fire. We've almost put it out at the entrance, so your main concern should be to not inhale any smoke. Hold your breath and take the first right, then head straight down the hallway. Fire doesn't frighten me. Thanks to Hell's blood running in my veins. I'll go ahead and wait for you on the other side. Catch up! Abadar keep you.
Block. There's nothing else I need to do within the rest of this area. I'm gonna walk into the spire area and we're gonna get an illustrated book episode. Uh, some game events played out play out as illustrated book episodes. The decisions you make during these episodes can have a drastic impact in the development of the game's plot. As with dialogues, you will often need to make various skill checks during these episodes. Depending on the circumstances, sometimes you'll need to choose one of your party members to perform an action, and sometimes an action will be automatically performed by the character with the highest skill bonus. This is essentially it, what we in 4th edition, uh, ugh, I feel dirty talking about it, but it's one of the best things from 4th edition, which was the skill challenges. Uh, essentially, this was a DM plot point to give more cinematic scenes where it was a matter of here are some small selections for you to do oh the uh the, the cavern is breaking down you're running along i need everyone to make a dexterity save and then you'd all roll your dexterity based whatever it was i know i'm making 5e references with deck saves and such but bad examples from playing 5e too much recently. Uh, so, like, so if it was, uh, everyone needs to make a acrobatics check, uh, you got five people in the party, a majority needs to pass, so three-fifths have to pass for the whole party to get through, then you'd all get through and, uh, dodge and roll, and, you know, the two people who failed, you could say that the two, like, the three people who passed helped drag and pull it out right before the crumble behind them. So, uh, right now, uh, we are walking into a room full of fire, and and so our adventures started earlier and much more tragic than we had expected. The whole team who gathered in the hall yesterday had been reduced to but a handful of brave souls, led by me, and not at all by that scoundrel Tartuccio, no matter what he might have imagined himself of himself. Jumandi Eldori was waiting for us, but to get to her, we had to march through the fire. Literally. As we approached the burning building, we, one, drench ourselves with buckets of water, two, try to find less dangerous path, Three, cover our noses and mouths before we rushed inside. We're gonna drench ourselves with buckets of water, make sure we don't catch on fire, and then we're gonna cover our nose and mouths and run through. It was a good thing we hadn't wasted any time. After entering the building and taking just a few steps forward, the walls behind us slanted and crashed down with terrible cracking sounds, blocking the way back. While we may not have planned on going back, if we'd come in a little later, the flaming logs and red-hot bricks would have fallen right on our heads. Regardless, we're left with only one way to go. The hot air burned our lungs, and eyes watered from the smoke. But Luna left us, stub led us stubbornly through the flames. While Tartuccio did nothing useful at all. We made it to the hallway leading to the banquet hall, and we'd heard someone calling for us. It was Valerie, one of the guards I'd chatted with in the banquet hall. Even then, in that calm setting, I had been stunned by her beauty. But now, amid the smoke and flame, she looked like a celestial avenger. <coughs> <coughs> An armored deity, menacing, but beautiful and merciful, descending from the higher spheres to help us poor mortals. She held a burned, barely living guard in her arms. There are two more, she shouted as she passed by us. They are wounded. Help me pull them out. 
Tartusio grumbled something about how Jamandi uh, uh, was waiting for us. Meanwhile, Lena, our brave leader, is 100% going to take that 9 athletics check to rush to save the guards from the fire. And I succeed. Saving the poor fellows didn't take too long. All t uh, together, we lifted them up and carried them away from the fire. Only then did Dowry pause to catch her breath and the white sweat from her face. Thank you, that was truly noble of you, she said. And now, let us rush to Lady Eldoria's aid. Ensuring the guards were rescued, the guards we'd rescued were relatively safe, we made our way to the hall, where the battle was already in full swing. And before we go into the fight, we're going to set up our battle regiments again. Alright. Put me in the middle, put you on the right. And we're going to check our items real quick and see if there's any better items for anyone for the upcoming fight. I don't honestly think I have anything better for anyone. leather onto my adorable little bard, which I'm going to see if I can see. I'm going to go through my character's backstories real quick, so I don't get one. We read Tartuccio and his little... Meh. Lindsay, the heroine's chronicler. I'm Lindsay, the author of the book You, My Dear Readers, Hold in Your Hands. I once studied at the Academy of the Arts in Pitax, and, uh, but I decided that a real bard doesn't belong within the suffocating walls of some school. I instead set off to find a hero, one worthy of being praised through the ages. And that's how I came to chronicle Lena, Lena's journey through the Stolen Lands and all that happened afterward. We read J. Fowles. Hallum, servant of a dark god, abandon hope and embrace the inevitable end. That's the kind of speech Hallum's companions must endure. Every single day. A priest of Grotus, Hallum left his dwarven home to spread the word of the god of end times throughout the stolen lands. Although, if you ask me, Harum's just a whiner, a one-of-a-kind. And yes, I'm going to be using horribly offensive accents when reading things through this entire Let's Play, so deal with it. Valiant Defender. A reliable comrade in battle, proud Valerie rejected her destiny as a paladin of Shaelin. Instead, leaving her order behind to find her own way in life. Her loyalty to our cause is only matched by her divine beauty. True, she can be a touch arrogant at times, but I do always feel safe when she's around. She's like a rock I can cling to. Ooh, she's got fatigue for five hours. Oof. Not great to start off with a character with fatigue. I really wish... Okay, so we know that she's a Tower Shield Specialist. I'm assuming she's a human? Yes. Oh! In... So she is a... Fighter, power shield specialist, but she is a former paladin who's currently got the atheism. On Gulf 
Galarion, Atheum usually denotes the belief that those beings commonly called gods are not worthy of the authority and revenants bestowed upon them. Atheists rarely doubt the existence of deities, and generally acknowledge that deities are very powerful beings that deem them no more than that. Instead of gods, they tend to reveal ideals such as goodness or freedom, philosophies such as prophecies of calistrade or diabolism, or nothing in particular. Some scholars argue that the term atheist is incorrect, incorrectly applied to these people, preferring terms such as dytheists or misotheists. Others call them agnostics insisting that no mortal can say what divine or uh, what is divine and what isn't as the workings of the divine are fundamentally unknowable by mortals however such distinctions are lost on a generally religious society and most accept the more common term atheism is looked down upon in many parts of uh, the world but is enforced on a state level in the nations of Rahadum and Gar Garund, Talvet in the River Kingdoms, and Bashan in uh, Tianxia. Despite their lack of faiths, atheist souls are still judged by uh, Farazma. Their posthumous fates vary. Some are sent to the plains, best matching their individual alignments and philosophies, while others become bodiless spirits in the astral plane. Or, uh, are reincarnated or find their fate in the graveyard of souls. And I, I just had to read through that because atheism is such a hard, hard thing to play in Dungeons and Dragons and Pathfinder and these types of tabletop games where the gods literally show up. So it's it's literally impossible to be a true atheist in the world of Dungeons and Dragons and such without just being a completely uh, uh, belligerent person to, to the world around you and the truths around you because there's just There's gods everywhere. There's clerics. There's there's literally supernatural beings and angels. And to truly be an atheist in the Dungeons and Dragons world is nigh impossible in reality because you would have to deny reality. Which I mean, I guess you could deny reality, but it's just kind of weird. Don't you agree, Alex? Like, atheism in D&D is a, a really hard do. All right. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I got my, my horribly uh, racially insensitive dwarf accent going on for that harem guy, so that was correct. Uh, let's see here. What are the special abilities the race thing's gonna be here? It says elf. But, undead and undying. Our adorable halfling bard. And our G jackbutt tartuccio the gnome butthead. Stupid butthead. He's so small and purple and a jerk. No, he's also a sorcerer. I'm the better sorcerer. I wonder what happens... Oh! Sneaksy. Sneaksy, sneaksy, sneaksy.
So Alex, remember how I told you about the ring that he gives you that he uses as a uh, a trick to try and uh, uh, trap you? Can't be equipped by Partartuccio. Because I was thinking I was going to be Sneaksy and just put this on him. No, mind you, it is a plus one to AC. And it really sucks to not put the ring on right now. But I'm trying to do everything I can to not have him, like, riggedy riggedy wreck me later on, and I just need that high charisma. Alright, I'm going to take this, this, take the dagger. How did armors worth one gold not even worth carrying? Padded armor, padded armor, padded armor, padded armor, padded armor, padded armor, padded armor. I just got rid of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So 90 pounds of padded armor, which is only worth nine gold. Take the short cloak, but with eight. I'm just gonna take the uh, the things from the armory. Why not? I might as well go in here and just up my that has banded me out. Eighteen. Versus 17. I might as well go for the 18. And I'm going to check this character's abilities. Armor proficiency to medium. Okay, so you can't wear heavy. I mean, You have chainmail right now, which is literally the best option for you. Light armor. Oh, hell yeah, I'll put the chain shirt on you. That's light armor? Awesome. Friendship lasts forever. Friendship lasts forever. I just don't like you enough, Tartuccio. I'm losing you at the end of this, which I'm fine with. Now you see me, now you don't. Now you see me, now you don't.
Alright, so conveniently, with this upcoming battle, we can see all of our people that we are going to be responsible for fighting, which means our party of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, including Kessie, is going to be fighting this team of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And these two are just going to auto battle all the creatures to get summoned here, so they don't really matter. But that's Frost Giant, and the Sword Lord is legit just riggedy riggedy wrecking that. So, fun pause. Let's pick. You did there. You did there. No, 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 Start this off. Start your time is over. Your images. One burned. What a waste. <laughs> mirror image.
drugs. You deserved it. Time to get my hands dirty again. Wash on. Away, you rascal. Become as dust. Stay behind me. Out of my way! Stand down. Repent! Strike is one.
Your time is over. I am your shield. Thank you for your valor and bravery. The enemy was strong, but you were stronger. And that means I made the right choice. Just as I thought there were worthy leaders among you. I'm especially grateful to them for the courage and common sense they showed while defending the mansion. But this attack means we have even less time than I thought. Someone already knows of our plans and is acting against us. You'll begin your expedition immediately. Dori, please, I know who arranged this attack. The vile king of Pitax, Iroveti. What's more, I know who among us works for him. Hey, you! Show everyone the ring you're wearing. You think I wouldn't recognize Iroveti's seal? That's why she wasn't killed. The bandits recognized her as one of their own by this signet ring. Yes. Such a gambit would be typical of Iravetti and his henchmen. And yet, it still seems suspicious. There's definitely a spy among us. But who? All I have is one word against another. I'm afraid you're both under suspicion. They both came to your aid, Lady Jamandi. But a liar's cunning knows no bounds. I've never met these two or their companions. For all I know, they're all conspiring spies. How could you say that? We fought together. We literally went through fire together. And then you vanished into thin air. After you promised you'd wait. My words might be rash. I bet my life despise anyone but this woman. I saw how she dealt with those creeps with my own eyes. A true warrior. I'd go with her through hell and high water. This purple crook, on the other hand. He's got the eyes of a spy. And the mug of a spy! Lady Aldori, don't listen to this thick-headed barbarian. She doesn't know what she's talking about. During the attack, our leader showed her true colors. She forced us to break into the armory and rob it! An attack is no reason to break into rooms in someone else's house. And is it not insane to be faced with death and stop to question whether you may be breaking some law or rule? Our leader acted wisely. There is a difference between initiative taken in battle and blatant arrogation. How can someone who disregards authorities be a leader herself? What about that trick she pulled right before we came in here? She knew very well you were fighting the enemy, but instead of rushing to help you, she dallied as long as she could, dropping everything to save people from the fire, even though the guards were handling things just fine. She was obviously hoping to show up too late and find you already dead. Really, Cartuccio? You're seriously trying to blame someone for saving people from a fire? They shall and spare me from ever having to make such a choice, but she behaved decently as a true leader. A true leader is someone who has their priorities straight, not someone who would put a valuable ally's life in danger for the sake of some servant. Enough squabbling. I'm still not sure which of you I can trust. However, the risk of entrusting the whole affair to a spy is too great. Here's what we'll do. Two teams will head out. 
That way, I'll know at least one group can be counted on to serve my interests in the Stolen Lands. Lady Aldori, most of those who were to set off for the Stolen Lands have been killed. Those who yet live will require help. Please allow me to join the expedition. I'm sad to lose such a talented warrior. But you're right, Valerie. They have greater need of you right now. Go, and may Abadar keep you. Which of the two teams would you prefer to accompany? If Tartuccio allows, I would join his team. Forgive me, but I don't appreciate your willfulness. And I like our leader. What wisdom lies in minding orders, laws, and rules in the face of oblivion, knowing not whether you'll be alive tomorrow? I will go with her team. Our leader is good in battle, but I don't like all the spiritual agonizing. I prefer those who can act without wasting time helping every little pipsqueak. Those like Tartuccio. Ugh, Tartuccio's going to take the credit for himself and be done with it. Shellen, spare me from such allies. As for me, I know neither of these two. At least, not well enough. And I have no wish to become an unwitting pawn to an unworthy leader. If Lady Jamandi allows, I'll remain in Restoff and help mend the wounds this attack has inflicted. But who knows? The road may bring me to the Stolen Lands, but not yet. I don't even need to think. I'm coming with this woman. As for you, Purple Toad, just wait until we meet along the way. I'll be sure to hang your rotten spy guts from the trees. All right, we have two teams. To avoid unnecessary conflict on the road, you'll each take a different route to the Stolen Lands. Tartuccio's team will go through Nevactus Crossing. The Garrison Commandant will provide him all the help he needs. You will take your team to Oleg Leviton's trading post. He's been complaining about the Stag Lord's bandits for a while now. There, you'll be provided with all the necessary travel supplies. I'd like to believe you, but I know all too well how convincing traitors and spies can be. If you're truly innocent, I hope you can forgive me this precaution. While you're away, Keston will investigate the night's events and learn who in Restov is working for Patox. But you should know that it isn't just Patox we need to worry about. The Royal House of Sertova may also interfere in our plan. I've managed to keep this affair a secret from them so far, but that can't last long. By my estimations, you have no more than three months. After that, any feats you accomplish will be points. And now, farewell. This battle was but the first ordeal along your path, and you overcame it as true champions of Restall. May the obstacles that follow also fall to your feet. Fear nothing, my friends, and return victorious. Surviving a terrible night, our small team set off to brave our fate. Beware, Stolen Lands.
All right. A mm, little bit of an intermission after getting through the intro. Not the absolute worst I've come across. Uh, took me a bit longer to play through the intro than I thought it was going to, but... Uh, two hours in the stream is the worst. I've definitely come across worse situations. And it looks like I stream is much more up to date on my phone than it is on my TV, so I'm just going to keep that over there. So yeah, I'm, uh... Supposed to have that on mute. <sighs> Alright. Our live stream shortly. I'm just taking a quick intermission. Let the uh, other things show. Does it matter? Serves you right. All right, let's strategize this. Take your turn. Away, you rascal. Yes. Ooh, party encumbrance is very high. I what a waste. I don't need my items first. Oh well. Turn. Tear them apart. Yeah, Mari, go in there. Swinging hard. You deserve it. Stand down. Become as dust. And roll in like crap. I'm missing on a 6 AC, like, come on. You offend me. Repent. It's high time to set up a camp and rest. In camp, all characters will restore some of their lost hit points. Special resource rations. When you press R, click the rest button outside of the camp area. Under your okay, same looks like everything's gathered around the bonfire.
done with waiting. No time for idling. Oh, sorry. I'll share my path. My cape is all worn out. Gotta catch a bear. A big one's hide would fit me just right. It took 12 hours, hunters four additional rations, not bad. Camouflage was... Gotta reduce our weight here.
our strength fades. This will be the setup. Ah, I was wondering what the noise was and I realized it was the piano. I had both headphones on, so I was like, what is the noise? Especially because I can't see the piano from here. Getting rest right now. Listen, Harem, would you ever want to return to the Five Kings Mountains? To take up a hammer again. To feel the heat of the furnace. Don't reopen old wounds. I have found my path, and I'm not turning from it. The mountains are my home no more. Even if someone would like to see me there. Turn on my mic again for going into Oleg's during the nighttime. Uh, I guess I will walk around and try to see where the gate entrance is. Versus the bandits. In the name of the stag lord, the <laughs> lawful authority of the stolen lands, we demand this week's tax and some beer. And where's that pretty wife of yours, Oleg? She should serve us some dinner. Cressel, quiet down, dimwit. Oleg. We're here for the Stag Lord's tax. Hand over the money, and we'll be on our way. I, I guess Kressel is now the, the the Emperor. That's the voice I'm going for. And then I'm going to go with Oleg's uh, voice being the Russian, because Oleg lived them. Also, this is, uh, if you know me as a player, this is the voice of my character Garugamesh, the unpronounceable. <clears throat> you want to drink some of my blood too? I'm sick of you. You like locusts. You think you can kill everything around here just because you pick up that painted rug of yours. You come here to squeeze us dry and come again. Oleg, a large man with a rough face, stops talking when he notices you. Ah, you must be the guests from Rostov. <clears throat> What am I going to go with? <laughs> not evil, so I can't do that one. What's going on here? I'm not interested in bloodshed. I won't let you rob this man. Be on your way. I'm going to let you go in peace. My task is done. <laughs> hmm.
No way, it means we can just rob a few idiots instead of just one to arms everyone. To the dust you will go. Playing with the auto end turn option enabled. This option will allow us the game to end the turn automatically when the character finishes their standard move action. This option enabled. Yes. Um, I would like to rage. Bring it. Bring it first. Your time is over. <laughs> this is where I step in. Alex, pay attention to the combat for a second. Serves you right. Give it a second. Your life ebbs low. Tear them apart! You rascal. That was it. I just wanted you see see have you see me explode him on the first turn. in combat and other adventures will level you up with the XP's. Yay! Let's... Collect all because Oleg has the monies and this is a trading post and we can sell stuff to Oleg. Take that to this! Mm. Nope, nope, that's Scottish action. Mm. Wrong one. Pick let you scoundrels. Oleg shakes his fist. But no! He scratches his head and stares at the ground gloomily. The girl got away. A plague on her. She's certain no companion to the stake lord. They came before to collect taxes. But this time they'll come to punish treason. Now what do we do? He sighs heavily. If only I could send Svetlana somewhere else safe. And show those shit bats what's what. He notices a fair haired woman has approached. Dove, why are you here? I told you to stay hidden. It's all over. I saw it. I just need to make sure you were alright. The woman looks at her husband te tenderly, as if with a hint of sorrow. Oleg mumbles something as he looks away, embarrassed. My name is Svetlana. I'm sorry if your arrival to our trading post has turned out so unwelcoming. Alright, I'm not sure. I saw someone run from your trading post, you know who it is. Oleg. This must be, must have been Bulkin. He sells potions. He lives out in the forest, like Hermit. But he comes here every day. He knows every tree and bush in that area, and hells they can help you. The Straglord's gang will want him to work for them. He lacks the courage to fight those bandits, but he won't just walk away from us. He has good heart, even if he is grumbles a lot, and especially recently. I don't know 
what they're deserving of some of these blood suckers come back and have everything, but alright, let's have a look. Why? Because I'm going to look in here and I'm gonna go. Don't need you, don't need you, don't need you, don't need you. He's got a lot of good stuff. I got 400 gold to get myself a masterwork something. Well, duly noted, if I was playing an elf right now, that would be super helpful. Because I could get myself a masterwork elven curved blades. light crossbow. Let's see if I can find myself a masterwork light crossbow.
Yay! I just sold like everything to get myself a plus one fucking crossbow. Woo! Use my one F bomb of the stream. Level up to level two. Get nothing at this level. Next. I'm gonna put a plus into This awaits us. Patience. Yeah, I'll just auto level up the cleric. I wrote it like I saw it. Here I am. See. I make potions and I sell them and gather herbs, roots, berries. I live in the forest. I live off the land. Since leaving Rostov for these parts, I have ended up as a merchant here at Oleg and Svetlana's post. They let me in out of kindness, help me with things. They bring me water or firewood when it's cold, and they occasionally barrel honey. They're good people. Where is this coming from? You want an old man like me to fight? Here, take this potion. Consider it my help in your fight. These bandits are here to bother you as much as... Of its big port, travelers. Oh, are they the Staglord's gang? That's who these la lands team with the bandits, like bedbugs in a beggar's hut. And you just stood up with them. They have a camp not far from here. I expect they will turn in full force in half a day, maybe less. Staglord won't take an insult like this lightly, and his henchmen are more like, more like demons than men.
They want those bloods of Christ and they own this land. They come, they take what they want and steal the better part of our money every month as toll from the leader. They even broke our gates, so we can't even try to hide from them. No one knows exactly how many there are. Sometimes only five or six come, sometimes it's the whole gang. <laughs> I'd have shown them what for long ago, not for Svetlana. Lana, please don't argue, though. No, we need to t decide on a plan. Go ahead and look around. There may be some tools to do with what we got. There could be so much else for us. Some tar, a box of alchemy, my other. Looks like. Set the post on fire or be shelled surprised. Well, maybe if we covered the walls with something to protect them. All right. Yes, I think it could work. I'll even shoot the arrow myself. I was pretty good with a crossbow back in my day. The fixes are full of this crowd Stagwood and his crews, of course. That Stagwood fancies himself a king in these fights. He may have the antlers for a crown, but all the troublemakers around here are happy to follow his orders as long as they're paid. So they charge an arm and a leg as taxes, and they call their executions punishments for treason. Even those who never swore allegiance to the state lord, they killed first, fast, if they're lucky. If not, why don't you go start supper while we finish our talk? There's no need to be protected from the dark talk. I'm not some blind kitten, you know. I've seen what they do to people. Sweat and Lana lowers their head. Most of the gang is made up of simple bandits. But there are a few monsters amongst their leadership, especially those close to the stag lord. Ox and Dove and from Nisroch come to mind. They like to make sure of their tortures and executions. My husband and I saw the bodies. For the bandits for now. Meanwhile, they'll never have enough. Fucked up possible attack. The dangers don't frighten me. This is my time to shine. <laughs> I'll share my path. <laughs> they got rid of the siege weapons. What a shame. There's catapults up here. How cute!
perhaps find him you're my big target. Repent. They go down. Your time is over. This spell's purpose is different. Oh, there's some crazy ragdoll physics. Any last wishes? Hundred. Uh -huh. Looks like we can go into breast. And the layout in here is completely different than it is in the book. Lucky day. 
easy. The dangers don't frighten me. Well, what? You wake from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it, you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. Quick look out the window, and you find out that the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? Please. Beauty is so tender, it can so easily be crushed under the blows of cruel fate. But you can save it from being undone. Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. The defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. Aid, salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. Yes, it hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. While responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. This fog, it enshrouds, entangled, suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created. My powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house, and it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me, but I can point you to the bandits' camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there. And listen to the echo, catch the whispers, search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again, and you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. I don't believe in fate, stranger, but our meeting seems more than a coincidence. There's so much more in this game than there was in the book, so I'm so happy that they ended up adding all this extra stuff. Safe locations, sort of a headquarters, prayer party, investigation, social location, store, follow you around. Follow the business, you should feel free. 
Hungry girl with tussled hair wearing dusty traveler's outfit sits chewing on the tip of her quill. Just a moment, how should I put this? Oh, I know. She scribbles something quickly in her notebook, scrubs with her braces her gives her braids mouth. Oh, hi. What do you want to know? Where are you from? Moreover, haha, I was actually born in a very tiny village. That's not even on this map. But you have all you like, but if you can get ideas into a children's head, it will only distract them from their work. But he did teach me on the sly. He taught me how to read, how to write. He gave me the books, poems, legends. He was the one who told me about the Ark Knights of Ath, Athestan. And I told him I was going on a journey and gave him a magic ring so that she would protect me from harm. I haven't seen this since I ran away from home. Hope he's alright. As I ever decided to run away, I traveled. Why are you so forget it. I can't waste my money on my looks. I'd rather buy books instead in a hundred years when people are reading my works. So I'm going to ask whether the author had holes in her sleeves. Oh my goodness, there is so much lore in this. I'm loving it. I am not reading this all out loud because I don't have hours and hours and hours to take care of this.
Red bones are gonna die any moment now.
this is my time to shine. like I'm about tired. It is two o'clock in the morning. I've been streaming for four hours now. So I think it's about time to call it quits for the night. I want to thank everybody in my community who ends up checking this after I've uploaded. Uh, thank you very, very much. And I'm going to let the uh, end stream... music fade out and uh